Welcome back to the Simulator Series. In today's episode, we are to be scripting the triple hatch and automatic hatching into our game. As always, if you guys do enjoy the video or it does help you out, make sure you smash the like button, also the subscribe button, and turn this post notifications on if you want to get notified every time I upload a brand new video. I also have a Patreon. If you'd like to support me and gain access to all the scripts and the game file that I make during this episode, there's a link down below in the description, and you guys can go and check that out. With that being said, let's hop right into it. To begin scripting the triple hatch functionality, we'll actually start by scripting the server side of things. So we're gonna go inside of the server script service and open up the egg script. Now inside of here, we're gonna want to go down to to the hatch function. Now for the hatch function, we're actually going to add an additional argument onto this, and that's going to be called amount, which is actually going to be a number. Now, additionally, for our variables has triple hatch and has six hatch, what we're going to do is set both of these to true. The reason that we're just setting these variables to true is because we're not implementing the game pass logic into the game yet. We'll do that in a future video and do all of our game passes at the same time. Now that we have those variables both set to true, the next thing that we want to do is check where we actually have the if has triple hatch if statement. Inside of here, we want to check if the player has the triple hatch game pass purchased and if the amount is equal to three. So that's the way that we're going to say from the client and tell the server, hey, we want to actually triple hatch this time. We're going to pass through this argument right here called amount, which is going to be a number. And that number can either be one, three, or six. Of course, it can be six because we have six hatch in our game as well. So we pretty much want to do the exact same thing, but below this. So we're going to copy and paste it. And this time we're going to say has six hatch and the amount is equal to six. Now, if the amount is equal to six, then we want to set the amount of hatches equal to six as well. And now we're good on the server side. So now we want to start scripting on the client side to do that. That, we're going to go inside of the star player inside of the star player scripts inside of the gy and open up the eggs local script inside of here we want to create a variable underneath of is hatching that's going to be called hatch mode and we're going to set that to one then what we want to do is go down to the hatch function now if the hatch function we want to add an argument to here as well which is also going to be called amount and this argument is actually going to be optional now inside of this function if we actually pass through an amount then what we want to do is we want to set hatch mode to the amount variable after we do that we can actually delete the amount of hatches variable and now we need to update this variable and we're going to replace that with the hatch mode variable that we just created. Additionally, we have to look at when we call invoke server on the hatch remote function. And now on the server side, we also want to know the amount as well. So along with telling the server what egg we want to hatch, we also have to tell the server how many we want to hatch from the egg. And that's why we're going to pass through hatch mode just like that. Next, what we can do is go down to the user input service where we listen to the input at an event. Inside of here, we can pretty much copy and paste this if statement. We're going to say else if, and now what we want to check is if the key code is actually equal to R. And if the key code is R, then we want to check if the player owns the game pass. And for right now, we're we're just going to set that to true. Now, if the player does own the game pass, then what do we want to do? Well, we actually want to call the hatch function and we want to pass through three because R is the hotkey for triple hatching a specific egg. Now, if the player does not own the game pass, then we want to prompt them to purchase the game pass, but we'll add this in later. So I'm going to delete that else statement for now. Now, additionally, when we press the E key, we only want to hatch one pet. So that's why we're going to pass through one to the hatch function. Now, additionally, we can copy and paste this else if statement. This time we're going to check if the key equals F and if the key does equal F, then we're going to pass through six to the hatch function because we want to hatch six eggs. Now, right above here, where we actually listen for clicking on the GUI buttons, what we're going to do is actually create an anonymous function inside of here, and we're going to call the hatch function and passing through one as the argument. Then what we can do is copy and paste this, and instead of saying one, we can say three. Then we can copy the code from where we check if the key code is equal to R, and then we can paste that right inside of here. After we do that, we can go ahead, copy and paste this, and this time we're going to say six. And then when we call the hatch function, we're going to pass through the number six. Now that we've done that, we can go into our game and test this out. Once we get into our game, we can go up to this egg right here, and we can go ahead and click on the GUI we can now actually see we're hatching three pets. Now, when we press the R key, we can also hatch three pets as well. And let's also try hatching with six. And now we see we've just hatched six pets. So that's all working perfectly. Next, what we're going to do is add in the auto hatching functionality. So towards the top of our script, we're going to go ahead and add another variable up here. This variable is going to be called is auto hatching. And that's going to be set to false by default. Now, above the get closest egg function, we're going to create another local function, which is actually going to be called auto hatch. Now, inside of this function, we're going to set the is auto hatching variable to the opposite of what it currently is. So we're going to say not is auto hatching. And then if we're not auto hatching, then all we want to do is simply return n and stop the function right there. Next, what we want to do is create a variable for the player's character. So we're going to say player dot character. And if we're not able to find the character, then we're just going to return n and stop the function right there. We also want to create a variable for the player's primary part. That's going to be equal to character dot primary part. And if we're not able to find that primary part, then we just want to return n and stop the function right there. After that, we're going to create a variable called start position. That's going to be equal to the primary part dot position. After that, we're going to create a while loop and we're going to have two conditions conditions for this while loop. The first condition is that auto hatching is enabled. And the second condition is that there is a selected egg. Now, while both these are true, we want to call the hatch function and pass through no arguments. The reason that we're doing that is because the hatch mode is going to be set based off what mode the player has previously hatched. So if the player wants to automatically hatch six pets, all they have to do is open up six pets, turn on auto hatch, and then it'll open up six pets every single time. After that, we basically want to reget all of these variables. So we're going to go ahead and copy and paste that. This time we're going to rename these variables to something like current character 
character and current primary part. Now we need to make sure that we check both those variables as well and use that right there for getting the primary part. After that, we want to check how far the player has moved from their start position. So we're going to say start position and subtract the current primary parts position from the start position. After subtracting that, we want to get the magnitude of that and we want to see if the magnitude is greater than five. Now, if the magnitude is greater than five, then that means that the player has moved about five studs. So we're going to set is auto hatching to false and stop the player from auto hatching. We're also going to call break right there as well. And now at the very bottom of this while loop, we want to say task dot wait one so that each time this loop goes through, it waits one second before it restarts. So with this function, what we're going to do is we're basically going to toggle on or off is auto hatching. And if the player should be auto hatching, then we want to get the player's character and the primary part so that we're able to get the starting position. Once we actually start the auto hatching, we're going to call the hatch function. Then we're once again going to get those same variables that we just got. But when we do that, we can then check where the player is at that specific second and then compare it to where the player started at. Now, if the player has moved five studs, then we're going to go ahead and cancel auto hatching because the player moved too far away. And that's how you're able to cancel auto hatching. And this loop is going to repeat every one second. Now, with that function being created, we can actually start calling this function. So right here where we listen for the mouse button one click on the one button, we can actually copy and paste that. And this time we're going to say auto. Now we can go ahead and copy this logic down here because we want to check if the player has a game pass here as well. And if the player does own the auto hatching game pass, then we want to go ahead and call the auto hatch function. Now, not only if they actually click on that button GUI, but also if the player presses the T key, then we also want to activate auto hatching that way as well. So we're going to go ahead and copy and paste this else if statement. And this time we're going to say T. And of course, if the player does own the game pass, then we want to call the auto hatch function just like that. Now, there's actually one thing that I forgot to do. If we go back up to our auto hatch function, right after the while loop is completed, we actually want to set is auto hatching to false. Now, you might be thinking, well, the while loop depends entirely on the is auto hatching variable. So shouldn't that already be false if the while loop ends? But that's not exactly true. It also depends on the selected egg as well. So if the player walks away from the egg, then the while loop will stop, but is auto hatching will still be set to true. So that's why we're setting is auto hatching to false after the while loop finishes. Now that we've scripted all that logic into our game, let's go ahead and start this up and test it out. So walking on over to this egg, let's go ahead and open up one egg. We can see that the hatching is working perfectly. And then let's go ahead and start auto hatching. So now we've turned this on, we can see that it is automatically hatching one egg. I'm not going to click anything. And if we wait a couple of seconds, we can see that the egg is automatically hatching by itself. Now, if I move away from this egg, we can see that nothing is actually happening. And that's because auto hatching has been canceled. Once I return to the egg, it still is not hatching because auto hatching has been completely turned off and we have to enable that before it'll start again. Now let's go ahead and hatch six eggs at one time. Then let's go ahead and turn auto hatching on. And now we can see that auto hatching has started and it's automatically hatching six eggs at a single time without us having to do it ourselves. With that being said, that's going to be it for this episode. Hopefully you guys did enjoy. If you did, as always, make sure you smash the like button, also the subscribe button and turn post notifications on if you want to get notified every time I upload a brand new video. Of course, I have a Patreon. If you guys like to support me and gain access to all the scripts and the game file that I made during this episode, there's a link down below in the description and you guys are going to check that out. With that being said, I'll see you guys in the next episode.